Welcome back to The Sim. We're in it for another video here, not just with the CRJ, but we're also gonna look at the working title, CJ4 and Real Sim Gear GTN 750, showing how it can operate LVARs and how we make it work with H events. Let's jump in and get into it. Right off the bat, you do have to have a copy of SPAD.next uh, I believe it's got to be the complete version. I don't know where VJoy fits in. I have the complete edition. I'm on the alpha. Now for this, you don't actually need alpha. You could do this with regular version because VJoy and serial interface is all supported. Here, we've got our GTN 750 from Real Sim Gear. I've had this for a couple years, almost a few years. Um, it was great. Used it with Pre 3D uh, and the Reality XP. Loved it. Um, these buttons, the text wore off or was partially missing. I mean, at the beginning when I arrived. Overall, it's been a very sturdy, rock solid unit. Really loved it. My biggest issue was we couldn't use it unless they gave us software. And even then, it's limited. And now with Microsoft Flight Sim and like the CRJ or uh, the CJ4, which we'll look at, well, I want to be able to reuse this for stuff. Like here, I've got my main PFD popped out and placed on it, and I want to be able to use knobs. So I decided, well, I'm going to make the volume push bring up our decision height, and now the volume knob is controlling the CRJ LVAR. And you can even see we've got it dialed in so you actually see the knob turn in the sim, right? We push the button, it's pushing, uh, so it's all the same. Up here, we went ahead and we added the pushing of our bearing selector for bearing one. Again, I just did something to show you guys. You can see right here in the sim where my mouse is, uh, that's actually pushing and making the click sound and we can see it changing in there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I came down here and I decided I would use this to press the HPA inches button. So we can see HPA, we can see inches. Uh, the outer knob, I made our nav source selector. And the inner knob, I went ahead and made the barrel. And then press and we get the standard barrel. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot you can do with it. It's all kind of awesome. Those are all LVARs. So when we jump into SPAD next and we go and we look, I've now got a VJoy device, which I have this now sending commands to VJoy through here. So I've now got my uh, GTN showing up as a serial device inside of SPAD Next with custom firmware I did. When we come in, I've got it sending to these buttons and saying, hey, switch these buttons for us. I relabeled my buttons. So this is on my VJoy. I relabeled button one because that's the direct two button. This way, when I load up a different plane, and I want to go map these buttons. I don't have to figure out again, oh yeah, which one is each one? So I relabeled it. So button one is the direct two button. Button two, which, whoops, I forgot to label that the home button. Whoops. So that's firing off my LVARs. So my button animations, zero and one for the bearing pointer, that makes it push the button. And then the actual changing of the LVAR event with the set change to one, just like everything else you've seen. I don't really need to show that. You can look at all the other CRJ videos about how to do data. Volume button, so I put that in. Button four was the FMS button or the knob push button down here. And then I jump up to button 11 and 12. Those are the events based on my uh, encoders. Um, we got 13, we got 14, uh, we got 15, and we've got 16. When you copy and paste, it actually copied the label as well. Oops. So this, I changed it to 
uh, volume minus, FMS minus, inner plus. So those are doing the barrow, FMS outer minor plus, those are doing those elements. Named them, assigned them. Now this stays with my profile. So when I switch to a different aircraft, it's gonna change. Now the GTN 750 doesn't have any LEDs. However, uh, as a quick little demo, I kind of wanted to show that if you did have them, so there is a system LED from the device I've exposed the 750's system LED. And by doing that, I can now leverage the script panel. And so the script panel for me right now is when we turn on the parking brake, it's going to change this to yellow and it's actually gonna turn on the LED directly on the board. So if we come in here, uh, we're gonna go to our data monitor. Let's go ahead and clear it. We're gonna add our locals. Nope, we're gonna clear it. We're gonna add a specific data. System LED. And we can see that data. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna undock this. Place it over here so you guys can see it. Now what's really cool, the script panel is gonna track this for us. If we look down here at the parking brake and as we turn off the parking brake, parking brake goes off, the LED goes out, the tag goes out that we're tracking, parking brake goes on and we can actually change those LEDs. So you can imagine if this is a different panel one that had LEDs, uh, you would be able to actually expose those LEDs and then control them in this similar manner. And the whole purpose of this would be to set up these script panels with saying like system LED, heading LED, altitude LED, autopilot LED, anywhere where an LED turns on and off, this would track those LEDs. That way, when we go from plane to plane, you just remap the device. And so here I would have built out all my LEDs. I would have gone ahead and I would published it. And I would have said, I want the complete script panel, um, all aircrafts, I don't care. And I would have called this the GTN uh, LED panel. And now when we go to our next plane, we're just gonna quickly hop out, jump into the CJ4, we'll be right back. Now we're back in it in the CJ4. This is the working title CJ4. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and now we're gonna show how we get to use this with the H events. And that example I was giving of LEDs. See, this doesn't have anything mapped. So I would have jumped online I would have found my GTN LED panel. I would have gone ahead, brought it in, and it's gonna say, of course, do you wanna replace? Yes. So now I would have had all my LEDs, only of course, they're not necessarily gonna make any sense because we need to change our conditional action. So let's go ahead and let's find something that is um cj4 related working title cj4 um emergency lights armed emergency light armed all right so let's take this guy and let's make him our guinea pig for the LED in this case. So we're gonna go and we're gonna do the same thing. Emergency light armed. So that's now what's gonna drive the script panel. So we're gonna come over here. We're gonna get rid of this guy. Whoops, we're gonna add data. Uh, we'll take this guy and we're gonna add data and we'll go back. I should never gotten rid of that guy. So you can see it's yellow, it's showing there. So if we come in and we turn that off. Of course, light goes out, our LED goes out, turn it back on. 
So there we'd be tracking those LEDs. Everything would be working great. Of course here, uh, I guess this wouldn't be a yellow. Uh, this one would be the off plate, but you get the idea. Uh, I could control the LEDs with data. All right, so because we jumped in and this followed to our CJ4, when we now go and we look at our VJoy, we're gonna see that I've now got the generic push button checklist. So this, right, this is a SIM event and this is the Microsoft, these are the HE events. So generic lower push checklist one. So this would have been found on our Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, working title CJ4, the lower panel, and there it is. So here's all of these H events, or HVARs, or whatever it's called. And yeah, so now when you see I've got the uh, MFD pulled out, so now I made this my checklist button, and now I can, this is the pushing on the knob, this is the inner knob, this is the outer knob, checking, right? I made this the menu key. There we are, checking that off. We wanna come down, we're gonna go into overlays. Let's get the terrain on, let's get the weather on. Uh, let's go back up a level, let's get out. We can go ahead and we can map whatever we want into the volume knob and the volume button as well. I think this shows you how we can actually now take real sim gear panels and as long as you have spad next there's a way to do this obviously rsg and brad and those guys can probably do their own thing uh but hey with spad.next uh you're getting access to the elvar bridge which would allow us to pull in the data so through the elvar bridge we can drive all those leds uh we can turn knobs turn buttons essentially turning this into the equivalent of a fully mappable HID type uh, device, kind of looks like game pads. That's it for now. I hope you like this one. Uh, hit me up in the comments. Uh, check me out in any of the Discord groups with SPAD or RSG or whatever. Uh, drop a like if you uh, think this is pretty cool. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.